Now we're live. <laughs> hey, we're live. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes, that's right. I agree. So we're live. It is Tuesday, our Between the Rolls, which is our weekly talk show to explore and divine into the intelligence and thoughts and musings and opinions of our esteemed panelists. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're going to be talking about what happened in this week in, uh, for Murder Hobos um, within this jolly little group of people, uh, the three shows that we had, as well as we're going to continue our discussion about D&D races. So tonight we're going to be focusing on elves. But lest us not forget to, uh, to um, please follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Um, you can view our past episodes on YouTube. Uh, join us on Discord, and please, uh, if you wish to buy things that have pictures of people stabbing each other in the back, um, <laughs> completely appropriate. Please uh, follow the URL that you see, a tiny URL type uh, on the on the screen. Um, we also have our audio only podcast at tinyurl.com front slash murder hobo inc audio. We'd like to thank our sponsors as well, uh, Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, and Oddfish Games, uh, makers of Adventure Sense. So if your game stinks, because we all know that that the people that play D&D and us it nerds, you know, we tend to play for 15, 20, 30, 40, 74 hours straight. We don't take baths. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, we need to, sometimes we need to have a little bit of Adventure Sense in our houses, which is just totally normal and should be expected. Um, but other than that, um, please, uh, please hit us up if you would like to participate in these shows such as such as tonight for our talk show. And we have three campaigns running at the same time, but we always have room. There's always well, room for um, for an not, extra. Not this week. <laughs> well, OK, maybe not always have room. <laughs> not for the because, one shot this week. You know, we're we got like, all new we, players. We're going, uh, we're going viral from like 10 people yeah. to 15 people, you know, so yeah. that's just, we're taking off. <laughs> really, we don't, we don't know what, to, we don't know what to do. I learned how to turn on a computer. So <laughs> yeah. I guess that's that, right. I guess that's so. one. <laughs> that's one. So, um, uh, yes, you can always, um, at least request to see if you can fit you in for a one shot, which are normally every other Saturday from our campaign. That being said, campaign. Let's talk about ourselves here for a moment, though. First, uh, we start off with a discussion or campaign. But to do that, let's first talk off with an introduction of ourselves. Carol, hey. who are you? What do you do? I get to go first. Well, hi, everyone. My I'm a name Southerner, is... You know, women go first. Yeah. My, oh, my, okay. My okay. okay. Yeah. That's, um, um, it's like that backhanded misogyny that's disguised. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and I'm a commission mini painter. And we also like to use this point to pimp any projects we may have. Right now, I'm trying to get to a thousand uh, followers on Twitter. And I'm running a little contest to win this guy. I painted him up. Um, so basically, I'm at muses underscore touch on Twitter, and you find the post, which is pinned to my thing, and you basically have to follow me, like, the, no, I don't have like as a requirement. So I follow me, retweet the post, and write a, a comment. It could be funny, it could be a compliment, it could be a total, ter totally terrible pun about eyes, because, you know, eyes. Um and I'm really happy. I, I think that if I do say so myself, this thing came out really cool. It'll actually be better. It looks better than my dim, my dimly lit uh, picture is, I think, right now. So that's what I'm doing. So come and find it if you want to win it. Thanks, Carl. That's great. Um, next, let's go over to Mr. Kyle. Kyle, who are you? And what do you do? And why do you do it? <laughs> If you give me the powers to host, I will be the greatest, most powerful DM the world has ever seen instead of a dark DM. You shall have the brilliant one. And hi, I'm Kyle, and I DM Cred. Uh, I don't know anything about yeah. elves, but Galadriel is scary, and I'll go with that. Yeah. That's pretty much all I got to say. I mean, you can also follow me on Twitter. I don't know what my Twitter handle is, and I don't do anything. 
uh, other than like an occasional comment. That involves me. I'm scared of Twitter. I'm scared of Twitter me. is yeah. not no. bad. It's terrifying, man. And it's horrible. It, it's, Why it's, is I'm Twitter afraid so I'm going to say something and then I'm going to get canceled. I don't really know what that means, but I'm afraid of it. No, <laughs> just you just should. don't be a don't be a dick. But it's That's hard. All. That's really because if is. you're nice to some person, then you're being a dick to someone else. You know what? Just you know? talk about gaming. Just 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 talk about like shit that happens on our games. How, That's like, it. The funny only, shit that happens on only games. White men should play games like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is it. That's like exactly that? it. We're done. We're <laughs> good. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, let's go. That's a word. Officially canceled. Start. Let's start at the top. David, what it, tell us about yourself. That's my dog. I'm sorry. I tell was us about to yourself. Say, <laughs> I start barking. That's it. So your dog wants to be on the show too. So hi, I'm hi, I'm David. Uh, you can usually find me here on Between the Rolls, uh, also on our Thursday show, Cacophony, Cacophony. and also our Calamity campaign. Both the A team and the B squad. So uh, that's where you can find me uh, if you want to show me something cool on Twitter. You can always find me at D and Devious on Twitter. So. I do have something cool to show you, but it's actually on OnlyFans. Do you mind signing up? We had that conversation, <laughs> Doc. <laughs> no, I know that's why he's doing it. <laughs> Ah, yes, that's good. We had that discussion earlier in the green room. Uh, I was expressing my ignorance as to uh, as to what all these newfangled things are, uh, how people who have nothing else better to do than to go around, you know, finding new ways to ask their buddies for money. So that's that's that's, that's that's basically what it is. But apparently there's whole new ways to ask people you don't even know for money. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, who knew? <laughs> so, uh, very, very interesting. So the, the first part of our session, we like to talk about uh, our three uh, campaigns that, uh, that we have ongoing, because this was campaign week. Um, in, that, uh, in that vein, let's start off with, uh, with Carol. Why don't you talk to us about what happened in episode 242, or actually that's just what it says on the thing. It's not actually a episode 242. We have no <laughs> idea what episode number that is. Frank, you need to stop naming episodes after numbers that, uh, that don't actually coincide with the numbers. But that's, you know, that's, that's okay. That's all right. But that's, that's, that's absolutely fine, and I shouldn't complain. So it's the cred campaign. <laughs> Cthulhu rises, everyone dies. What happened? Well... I think I can sum it up in two words or three words. Dreams and mutiny. I think that's about it, nice. right? Yeah. <laughs> so basically all of us had dream all that that fortitude save we made at the end of the previous episode that we're all going, oh God, that we all like think we failed, really was just an initiative order for who gets the dream. Who got the dreams first, second, third, and fourth? Um, and Kyle, you did an awesome job. You you really brought in each character's. You brought in a lot of backstory and history and such, except for I think for me, mine. I think Anya's dream tends to be some sort of an. It feels like an ongoing story here. It'll be very interesting uh, oh, where it leads. Can you mute yourself and then not watch this episode? Are you what? muted? No. No. Turn your sound off so you can't hear what, what? I'm about to say. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. There, now I can't hear you. I am completely ripping off the story of Polaris by H.P. Lovecraft uh -huh. for her story. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You may. Ah, okay. <laughs> so it's safe now? Yes, mm -hmm. no, it's absolutely safe. And I just want to say, Carol, it's actually your backstory, which is why dreams are so prevalent Good. in this campaign. Yeah, because, I mean, that that is a thing in my backstory. I thought, you know, I thought for a Cthulhu campaign, dreams would be a really good fo uh, focus for a backstory, as well as all the other shit I threw in there, too, so that I can't wait, wait there to was see other how stuff? The... Yeah. Oh. You know that. Oops. No, actually, I don't rewatch. I do not watch the episodes of In Frank. I can't stand to actually listen to mm. myself. I don't like my voice. 
A lot of people. You know, don't. I said that too, and then I actually listened to this last episode, and I was like, man, I either sound better every day, or I am getting used to the sound of my own voice. I like your voice, actually. I think your voice, you've, you've got a good voice. Carol, I have a wife. Calm down. <laughs> I have a husband. So what? Anyway, Let's so what else? So, <laughs> so um so yeah. So we each so each of the characters had a dream and uh you have to watch it to see what they were. And then after that, I let's see. I believe it was still the same night cuz I was thinking, oh, we were going to for sure start tromping through the jungle. No, we didn't get start tromping through the jungle. Basically, we wake up to a commotion. I at least I think that's what happened. We woke up to a commotion after the after the dream, and you each had your own separate dream, right. denoting that you were to be third level. Uh, and then <laughs> you right. actually had a uh, uh, an otherworldly the... dream that. Oh yeah, but that's right. There was one that we all had together. I almost forget about that one. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I don't. And waking up from was. that horror nightmare, you noticed a commotion. Yeah, and uh, then that was the mutiny part. And basically, a, not everybody, not the entire crew of the ship, but... The twins, the, the triplets, twins, and most important, Nebby. <laughs> Nebby, yep. Ne- we, yeah. Basically, they had stolen the uh, one of the triplets stole the bag of the precious stones the welcomite mm-hmm. and they they had a really good head start on us yeah we we, we failed she. but i mean oh she that's right she, she. we we did fail in actually catching them but that would have been that would have been really flipping difficult i mean there were there were we basically took too much damage. Our monk, <laughs> our monk, out of all people, he, he ended up uh, falling to a sleep spell because none of hit points, actually. That's oh, more we'll than that happened, Carol. I'm so. not, hey, uh, hey, you guys have like complained I take too long in these. So now I'm only skimming the surface. Only skimming well, the a surface. monk rolling a one is not good. Oh, no, that wasn't good. <laughs> I was going to say, well, uh, uh, and I've already told Carol and tripped. the other people this, is uh uh you know you make plans and god laughs i had written down you know it's like okay this is how fast the dwarf can move in one round uh this is how many key points uh dj monk bran has and he can only move 90 feet per round for three rounds and i had it all written out yeah and so then, i mean yeah you first thing oh, it's like okay down. i want to run after him I was like, all right, you got to get up, and uh, that'll give you 15 feet, and that'll bring you right there. All right, I have a 20 foot movement speed. What? <laughs> yeah, uh, but you, all, you also had a pretty good head start. And yes, the monk rolled a one, and I believe was tripped. Well, I mean, I, I think, think you it was, guys could have tripped been twice. <laughs> yeah, and... I mean, it's it's dice rolls, you know. I mean, you can't really control that. But I mean, no, you beat you beat the snot out of me with probably one of the strongest fighters that was there. So, no, I was I was out of the fight even when I was brought back to like two hit points. I couldn't really get back in there. You know, it's just. I mean, yeah, we might have been able to get the gems, but otherwise, I don't. I don't think we had a good shot. Especially, we also didn't have spells. We had all we used, at least uh, me and Cleo did not have spells. Cleo, Ernie, had spells. Ernie. she didn't know her character well enough to do that. Uh, I'm going to just say this, and then I'm going to end the conversation. I think it's really uh, uh, epitomizes, you know, a group that hasn't quite yet come together. And is working mm-hmm. together because as I was, uh, uh, as you guys were uh, playing, it was just like, oh, you know what? They're not working together. Carol could run ahead, kick Bran in the face. I couldn't get there. Uh, oh, you could have. You could have. You weren't uh, as far away as you think. You were. It's not that. If it's not that, I had very few hit points and leaving uh, leaving my attackers you know uh melee range would have personal provoked. vendettas uh were had which kind of got in the way of party cohesion i don't have any personal vendettas i wasn't you it was uh someone against nebby <laughs> oh well yeah which i'm not sure he knows why <laughs> 
but it, oh, that was the funniest part. Was was <laughs> was uh, yeah, was um, Ernie. What the hell's his character say? Riley. Riley. Riley's vendetta against Nebby. I think. Well, well, he was saying that. Yeah, he doesn't know why because that's right. I I don't know if it was his result of the dream or what, but he lost part of his. Oh yeah, it was it was him grabbing the tablet in the dream, mm-hmm. and then suddenly he wakes up and he's missing two episodes i guess we could put it that way or basically a couple of days including yesterday and he, <laughs> he knows you know he know he feels he feels but he felt betrayed by nebby but he didn't know why that's the funny part so he he that's the one nice thing about warlocks is they do have an endless supply of eldritch blast so he at least did have that but yeah, I said I was I was tapped out because of the fight with the boar. <laughs> yes, yeah. so we didn't get full rest. So, I mean, as I said, that would have helped. But it is what it is. I mean, you know, it is an island. How far are they? How far are they really going to get? We can probably track. We could probably track them down. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing in the next episode. Is we're going to have to get a rest and go track them down. Don't forget you have Nebby, so you may be able to get some answers as well. Uh oh, that's right. We did not we uh, uh that's right. Um Brand spared her, I believe. Mm-hmm. He prevented okay. her from dying. So yes, we could get answers. And I okay. do think it's and and as probably both 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 uh my character and myself, we both kind of think that it's something going on with the island and something messed with their heads is probably messed with their heads, but I don't know. That's just, well, that is, that is kind of, you know, a lot of campaigns based in Cthulhu is that a lot yeah. of stuff messes with your head and it's yeah. really going to be hard. It's really, really going to be hard for a party <laughs> to maintain any type of cohesion inside a Cthulhu world worldview because people slowly start going crazy. Or they may or may not start going, <coughs> may start going crazy at different rates, at different speeds, and I think that's going. I think that typically has as an effect on the way that the way the party works together. Because you may have someone if they're playing their characters correctly, in my opinion, being a snobby DM, if they're playing their their their, their characters correctly, um, you know, if they're role playing them, then then cohesion could be very very difficult. But that's just my opinion, which means it's probably basically right. So um oh yes. sure written in <laughs> stone, wow, man. but that's mostly no, because you, they didn't have pen and paper back then. Yeah, well no, I, I mean I you, you guys know I'm kidding, right? But um yeah. yeah, no, seriously. I mean I've I've never played in a Cthulhu campaign, so I wouldn't know anything. I've read a lot of books, but I've never played in one. So maybe I have no you idea should what it should you should talk to my husband about it because he runs a lot of Cthulhu. And actually, well not uh, tonight. Yeah. They're often they're taking a night off. Uh, but DJ runs a Cthulhu campaign on I, I, I'll have, I, I may talk to him about that because I've always wanted to. I just never have. But anyway, David, why don't you tell us about the Calamity campaign that was running? Um, what happened and uh, about our nice little 11 minutes of... Um, <laughs> you dick! You are a dick, Scott. Me? No, I didn't. Eleven that minutes, bad. you it's, dick. It's in the DM outline, so yeah. Free so it's not dicks. Scott. <laughs> I, yeah, I, but he could have left it out. He could have forgot it was in the outline. Okay. <laughs> no, that was, Let me that was explain, funny. folks, and try to try to leave you something to watch in the meantime. <laughs> so, oh gosh. So as our episode picks up we had just finished our initial fight of the grung uh we picked up a trail someone was leaving us uh scraps of cloth behind that scott's character required uh knew right away what it was and was uh you know you know completely enamored with uh, (laughs) the that's a running joke anyway we found Followed this trail of uh, cloth, which lead us up, uh, leading us upon uh, uh, an ambush in pro- in progress. The Grung had caught up with uh, some of the captors of the people from Ba, and were summarily uh, taking them out. So we show up on the scene. Uh, two of 
uh, people announced who they were, uh, were, were down. Others were still fighting the Grung. So, of course, Ingve springs into action and starts healing everybody. <laughs> and, uh, you yeah, know, some of them uh, get up, join the fight. Others run away. So, anyway, uh, after us uh, killing the Grung, uh, Ingve noticed that there was still so- someone, a victim, barely alive, still uh tied to a tree and as he moves closer he discovers that it is his father and his father had been bitten and tortured uh bitten by a snake and tortured by the grungs and he was too late it was too late he um he was i tried to save him uh and heal him and he's just like don't (laughs) so and a, I think it was a poison that, you know, prohib- prohibits you from gaining hit points until, mm-hmm. you know, neutral or from regaining hit points until, uh, you know, neutralized. neutralized. Poison or, yeah. So, so, until the poison is neutralized, you can't, you know, you can't be healed and it slowly takes you down. There, there are quite a few effects that do that, but that mm-hmm. was particularly vicious for you because it took a long, long time. It took a long time. One thing that you need to know, folks, is that when rolling one, Frank asks you to roll percentage dice or a die 12 or just any dice in, in particular. High numbers are not necessarily good. Ooh. No, as Ingve found out this, <laughs> this I thought episode. It was, I thought it was a D12, and a lot of times that is good. It was a D12. Was a that's D12. why I thought 11. Oh, great. Uh, no, it turned out 11 excruciating minutes for my father to expire so yeah so ingve has to live with that on his soul so after after ritually uh taking care of ingve's father's body we uh got into pursuit of uh the i guess the bandits that that were still uh ahead of us uh we found a trail of bodies um scott and i before the show worked out a dichotomy between ingve and his character <laughs> uh yeah so scott do you want to tell him a little bit about that yeah so what we we had you know advanced to third level at that night of, of rest so you had to start picking a um a path for a monk and looking at all the different paths i'm speaking as a player now and a little bit out of character i thought that it would be appropriate that, you know, considering, you know, what, what, you know, Rakir is doing and also that first run in with that undead character, the one that woke up the skeleton that woke up, you know, he's now fascinated with two things, money, well, actually three things, <laughs> the, 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 the approval of others, <laughs> money and death. So he selected as his path way of the long, you know, way of the long death to where, and the way I'm interpreting that is now he's going to start, you know, really investigating why, how, you know, things die. So experimenting on, on small animals, uh, looking at, you know, dead bodies and trying to find out what makes them tick, you know, can you replace the eye of someone dead into the eye of someone living if they yeah. lost an eye in combat and maybe the eye will work? Well, why not? Why doesn't it work? You know, what part contains life? What part doesn't contain life? So that should be interesting because Ningve likes to um, likes to heal everyone. And of course, our wonderful <laughs> Leonid, you know, is very noble and doesn't like, you know, how, you know, how would you say, um, you know, uh, um, corrupting the bodies of the dead and such mm-hmm. as that it's, it's, he needs to, they need to be sanctified and such. So, um, and, so, and, you know, so much. So Azari and I, Jesse, I uh, had to have a conversation <laughs> that we were worried about Scott and a little bit, worried, a little bit worried about my uh, characters. I start, you know, trying to sew eyes open and shut and replacing mm-hmm. you guys didn't catch me. I, I, I was like, you know, looking for beavers and, you know, <laughs> squirrels and digging out their eyes and trying to replace. So that them. was that, that yeah. dice roll that you were rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to find ways to switch eyes from different creatures. 
Um, yeah, that was fun. And of course, Dave just wants to kill everything. So he doesn't really care. And once you're dead, you're dead, you're gone. So I don't think he would bother too much, but you know, for a noble lean and warrior, you know, uh, bodies, they're, they're, you know, they're, they deserve a noble death and, you know, some respect, you know, and such as that. But I've already pilfered a couple of coins from dead bodies from the, from the, you know, bear downs we were in anyway. So, you know, I, I don't really care about that. So that should be interesting to see how that, how that dichotomy works between someone who's obsessed with death, someone that keeps on healing every, uh, everyone, someone who likes killing people, Dave, our barbarian, and someone who believes in the sanctity, sanctity and honor of a noble, com, of noble combat and noble death. That should be interesting to see how that works out. Did I explain yeah. that pretty well? Yeah, you did yeah. very well, actually. So don't be surprised, folks, if Rakir ends up being the big bad at the end of the campaign. So. I, I've been, you know, you know, the funny thing is, I keep feeling like that he's the one that's getting more and more on the outs. But yet, here's the ironic thing: he was the one that was supposed to be the big suck up to everybody because he just wanted to be liked. And now he's oh, going to be the big. Oh, liked. he still wants to be liked. Well, I still, I still. But apparently, be liked. not by the party. Well, um, you know, I assume, and I'm going to take for granted that they already like me. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be thankful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so. They're going to like me when they realize how rich and powerful I am. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know? should be DJ's character, Nav. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so there you go, folks. Things move fast in uh, Frank's campaigns. There's never any time to actually role play and grieve for her no fallen shit. family members. No so, shit, right? So things I mean, move very friend. fast in that episode. We also happen upon uh, a young Southern hunter <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> that ends up joining our party. So hey, you'll see how hey, that turns out. Hey, David, David. Hmm. Not only that, if you actually do try to role play that your character is grieving, you will be mocked for it. So oh, yeah. you'll oh, be yeah. what? Rolled, no. so you'll be totally no. No. mocked yes. for it. No. He'll go <laughs> Yeah, then we all know what Frank is. Yeah, I saw the chat. Oh yeah, Carol. Frank would Frank do it. that. <laughs> I saw the chat. Oh, he's going where where on the flipping chat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, so it, anyway. Because Taryn is a tough motherfucker, so she doesn't grieve. Right. However, yeah, right. Yeah, she just wanted to play a flute all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so accurate. Oh man. So so anyway, folks, it's a great episode. If you get a chance, check it out. It um, you know, even though we dump some spoilers on you, uh, it's still a very funny show. So you'll enjoy it. And it's only they're only two hours long, so you yeah. know, in the time you watch Critical Role, you get both episodes. Exactly. Think about that. Go. That's true. They're bite-sized. True. They're bite-sized mm-hmm. little episodes. <laughs> now, for our third investigation of what we were talking about, um, we had uh, uh, our um, tri-family generational game um, that uh, I think they cleared Corpus Keep. Uh, that is um, um, where where we were. Um, and th- did anyone watch it? And can anyone give a quick description about what happened? <laughs> I was driving, and so so I did not have spiders. Answer. That's all I heard. Spiders. 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 I heard spiders and turned it off. I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh, nope, 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 rope. Yeah. Well, no, I was uh, I was driving, so I didn't get a chance to uh, to uh, to uh, do that, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, I encourage you all to uh, to uh, check that out. It is a lot of fun. Uh, um, they 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 all play 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 well and play off of one another quite well. So I'm sure it was been a very uh, very very enjoyable um, uh, episode for everyone to watch. That being said, let's move on to what our topic is tonight, and that is elves. We were discussing different types of of races. Our first week we talked about humans and the different variants. Um, and then after that, we um, what, what? Which one did we do after that? Dwarves, dwarves, yeah, dwarves. dwarves. Very right. human dwarves. dwarves. That's right, dwarves. And then now we're going to talk about uh, now we're going to talk about probably the third wheel of the uh, of the classic races, um, elves. Now, um, just a little bit of a background <clears throat> because uh, because I like doing this so much. Um, 
looking at where where D&D came came from that you know was Gary Gygax's general idea is to have a game system that was Lord of the Rings for, for, for lack of a better word and elves played a tremendously high and they had a tremendous importance in the Lord of the Rings right um, and the you know Cimmerillion and all the things the history of the of the entire of Middle Earth can be you know summarized you know the history of the elves until the men showed up and screwed everything up. So um, that's that's and, you know, all of the big combats and all of the big you know discussions were problems between dwarves and elves. Uh, and then men were basically an afterthought, and at least until the third age. So that being said, the influence that elves have had on uh, on D&D and D&D culture and how things are, are evolved and such as that is is very fundamental to, to, to the fabric of the way that the way that D&D works. That being said, that being said, let's talk about, and I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have Carol talk about this. What are the differences that you've been able to notice between how players, how you as a player have seen other players right. interpret elves? And uh, in, in games that you've played and, and as you've been as a player, not you yourself, because everyone does it kind of differently. But what what is one way that you've seen an elf play that is non stereotypical? OK, or non non. Normal. That's a shame because I'm the one that does play or non stereotypically, you know, uh, it's a lot harder to think about what other people have. I mean, usually are we including sorry, are we including half elves? In this statement, since we yes, already we talked are. about no, 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 yes, well, yes, yes, we half, are. yes, we are. But but the thing about half elves is usually they're a bit warmer to people. They're not, you know, they're not as um, uh, what the hell's the damn term? Fuck, what's it? They're more not as sociable? snooty. They're more sociable. They're not as snooty. But I'm I'm missing the at the term. I uh, the, that here. mud blood in a mixing with that the, elven fancy blood, right? Funny thing is, I think a lot of players don't, you know, a lot of elves are because they're so long lived and they sort of tend to be on this lofty, you know, this is this is not literal, obviously, but they're like sort of on a lofty pedestal looking down upon the world, so to speak, because it's so long lived and a lot of them are fairly, you know, they're definitely, they definitely have a sense that they are, they're a magical being too. Um, but a lot of the way I, I a lot of times the way I see other play, players play them, and I think because it just works better in terms of you know um, keeping the peace in a party and uh, you know hmm. building some good bonds is that they're not as snooty and that they don't look down upon the party members. Maybe they. Do you think, yeah. What's that going? Do you think that's a function of of the way that five E works, or do you think that's no. a function of the way that the that the that the player character that the player has interpreted? Oh no! I think it, I've been seeing a I've been seeing that way of playing it for a long, long time, way before Five E. I think, so, if I may interrupt one more time, sure, I think it's ahead. DMs who end up playing your uppity elves. Yeah, exactly. Players have to again be cohesive, so mm -hmm. you can find it less likely unless you have one of those red flag players i was about to say uh, what games yeah. you've been playing in man <laughs> so, i don't you know, know but i'm not here all the time <laughs> but it's true but yeah most like my friends and stuff that have played elves i mean yeah they don't tend to say they don't tend to be snooty and i'm gonna i still totally forget the actual term okay. oh. it's gonna drive not me my don't worry campaign. it'll it, 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 it will come to you i'm gonna go to david and say david well, how about yourself? How how have you decided to play and interpret L in, within the different within the different systems? I, I know you've played for a while and played maybe mm -hmm. in some, some some different systems. <coughs> have you changed the way that you've played elves over the year? Are you pretty pretty? Do, do you stick to the stereotypical, you know, long lived kind of snooty? Um, I'm going to shoot a bow and cast spells. Or are you, you know, how do you, how do you typically interpret? I'm, I'm more of the Leonard Nimoy type of elf. So than anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but um, no, but to go against that, uh, actually uh, I've, 
I'm look at uh, you know uh, what Rob is doing in our campaign. I think it, Dave is a half elf, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, he's not going your stereotypical uh, half elf, you know, uh, mold. He's he's playing a barbarian. You know, how many right. half elf barbarians can you play? Um, right. One one of the things that I was no, doing no. that I was looking into for a particular uh, type of way to play that was also as a barbarian, and especially since Tasha's Cauldron of Everything came out with the the barbarian uh, of the the fey the the wild barbarian wild magic barbarian uh, that just goes well with being an elf so uh, just imagine uh you know a primal elf warrior from the fey wild i mean you know that's not controlled of the magic uh within him you know or her and um that that's that's how i would play it um you know, to just get away from the caster all the time and the stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Kyle, what is your favorite variant elf to play when you don't play a dwarf? <laughs> You're muted. No, he's not. He's pretending. No, I, he's you know, I always pretend. You can tell because I uh, move my face much more than I should. Um, my favorite variant of elf to play... Uh, Ooh, brain fart there. I do prefer the high elves. I do like if I eh, it's the min maxer in me. I prefer to have a little bit of magic. But I will say actually, if again we're including half elves into the subject, I do prefer playing a half elf because it's that little more human normalness that I can understand a little bit better because. I mean, we're kind of talking about going against stereotype right now and maybe talking a little bit more about stereotypes right. would help a little bit. You know, when I see or when I imagine the elf, I do go with the Lord of the Rings elf, uh, not Hermie pulling out teeth, but uh, uh, Galadriel and all her uh, splendor. Uh, and one of the things that I found fascinating uh, and a little bit more every day is uh, the idea of races that don't die from age that as long as nothing unnatural happens to them they are going to live from the beginning to the end and they're just going to witness it all uh, much like uh, deep ones and so i've been finding a little bit of fascination with that um and so as i think about it more and more i think it would be great even though it may seem stereotypical uh, to think of elves as these people who have lived so long, they don't know what an only fans is. And so <laughs> while Christ. some come across this, wow. that's called a callback. And I do those fairly often. <laughs> Holy crap. But, um, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, the, at that point, then you do get why the stereotypes are there. But as a player, then you make sure you layer in. It's it's not the fact that he's uppity. He just has lived so long. He's seen so many things fail that this is another thing. And he really is rooting for you, but he knows what's going to happen. It's just a, a, a repetition to him. Um, I mean, that also makes playing an elf as a player character weird because it's like yeah my character lives forever why am i even going on an adventure because you're bored uh, i guess um yeah. or 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 you're accused of murder and need to get away so i mean there you yeah. go there you go. Carol, I'm going to turn it to, to you a different you had mentioned earlier how much you would like one particular dark elf um uh, Drizzt <laughs> And uh, so, yeah. so, 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 my question to you is uh, is pointed. Um, would you ever play a a drow? And if you do, are you going to play him to his nature, or are you going to play him like Drizzt? What's your thought on? Because uh, there was a while there, I think that every single time that I would try to play D anD D, everyone wanted to be a drow, and everyone wanted to pay them good. I'm a drow, but I'm a good drow. 
It's, and and I, I got kind but, of tired. So if you're going to play a drow, would you yeah. play them true to type? Would you play them evil? Just straight up nasty, gnarly evil? You, in, a, in a D&D game that's in a group, that's awfully hard because evil technically is like the ultimate in being selfish. And that doesn't tend to play nice with others. So, uh, and I like, and, and as a player, I like to always, I like to play heroic characters. I mean, you know, I do not like to play the villains. I, as a GM, I like to play the villains, but that's different. But as a player, I want to be the good guy. So I, I probably would play it more like, I'd probably play it more like Drizzt. I mean, just because. You're but I said Mark, also, but I do think, I mean, I've seen evil characters that have worked all right in a group. Um, and no, I'm not talking just about that one I mentioned, DJ's Nav character, which basically played nice with everyone to basically bend him to his will. No, 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 no. I've seen it also where that it is to your benefit to play nice with the others in the group because you'll go further with them mm. than mm. to turn them against you. And it's the and you'll be outnumbered and you'll likely end up dead if you cross them enough. So I mean, I, I could try something like that, but I don't tend to like to be the bad guy. I like I like to this is just personal preference. I like to play good guys. So you like to play good guys. Okay, yep. no, that's that's good. That's good. David, I have a question for you then. Mm -hmm. What given that we just heard Carol's opinion about playing a drow that's in essence non-stereotypical because the stereotypical elf is a uh, drow is is quite evil although drizzt kind of breaks that mold and they also it. may be chaotic too because they chaos also, that's true. is a big ba at least in the forgotten realms version of drow right that's no the no that's, that's that's that is well you know it's all about loth and it's all about chaos Right. So no, that in itself also people. makes it hard for party cohesion. Yeah, everyone, get... everyone trying to get one over on one another yeah. and, and stability and order is almost is almost frowned upon. So, David, huh? what stereotypes do you believe that people have just their preconceptions going into a game? If they're going to play an elf if they're, or if they're in a party that where someone is going to play an elf, what stereotypes do you think work for elves as a race? Which ones do you think don't? Which ones would you like to see or you wish to say, you know, that's a stereotype and I don't know why that's a stereotype. You know, that that just doesn't work. You know, I think Kyle had mentioned about, you know, elves being uppity and, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, arrogant and such as that. What stereotypical trait do you not like about elves? That's a hard one, man. And aloof yeah. is the word I was looking for. It was aloof. 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 There you go. That's that was word. the word. And it's it like, was going to come to you. It was going to yeah, come to you. Yeah, it did. I started looking up the description then. And before I even got there, I'm like, oh, shit, it's aloof. That's the yeah. word. I think Carol so just answered the question. <laughs> what is your least favorite stereotypical trait of elves, David? Uh, is that really the question? It, it, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because there's a lot of stereotypes I don't like about them. Uh, okay, well, the, you, you, racism, you, you know, racism. You can give us a couple. Okay? That's a racism. good one. Racism. Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, racism and classism <laughs> among among the elves. You know, so and and how often do you see that translated by a player character, or is that something that everyone hates so much that they? just can't bring it into a game. And we talked about that, I think either our first, I think we were talking about dwarves, about the original, mm -hmm. you know, racial animosities that you had in first, you know, right. one e. you know, right. you had different things. Everyone hated drow unless mm -hmm. you were a drow, you know, and then your know, halflings were like this and dwarves were like this. And then you had the, you know, wood elves and the high elves and the gray elves and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. So racism and classism is really important. How, how have you not really important, but really critical in understanding elves, how have you seen that translated, you know, or has everyone just said, no, I'm just, I, I just can't bring that into a game. Uh, unfortunately, the, the circles that, that I've been playing in, I mean, you know, decorum is like thrown out the window. So they mm -hmm. will play into that. They will play and play the races into racism and classism. But, um, but since mostly uh, a lot of times I was DMing for kids and all that, 
their exposure was Gim, yeah. you know, Gimli and Legolas. So right, that's how right, they play right. it at the table. You right, know? right, right. Well, well, that's 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 probably refreshing. Which now I'm going to ask you the opposite of that question. What is your favorite stereotypical trait of elves? Which uh, one do you think is saying, yeah, this this part this part I like about them? Uh, well, uh, the thing that I like about about the elves is I. One of the things I like is the depiction of them as always the learned scholar. One mm. of the things that you could do is play against stereotype and be the idiot, you know? So <laughs> fail your arcana checks and shit like that, you know, that, that'd be funny, but you know, but the, 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 the I think that's the thing that I, I liked when I um, played an elf is the learned scholar uh, who's always there to do the arcana checks or history or something like that. You know, um, one so of the, them is like repositors of lore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They make great bards. They, especially lore bards. So Gee. I play that. I play that. <laughs> I, I play that a, a lot. So um, they do. They, they really do. I see. Yeah. I see. So, um, Kyle, I'm th this, this question goes to you. I'm going to kind of ask you, kind of ask you the same question as uh, a, um, a um, combination of what I asked Carol and David. If you could min, and to play on uh, what you said, if you could min max an elf, how would you min max an elf? What is the best combination right now in 5e? Playing, you know, role playing them and min maxing them, how would you do it? And you're sort of muted or you're moving your lips and no sound is coming out, in which case I'd go to a doctor if that's I would case. probably go with an Eldritch Knight uh, wizard combination. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as that goes dexterity base obviously because dexterity is the best set oh a blade singer uh mm -hmm. eldritch knight mm -hmm. is what i'm That'd thinking good. there you go uh while i am amazingly in love with the idea of an arcane archer i probably would stay away from that class i am playing it currently because i like the idea of the class more than the actual class itself I'm I'm hurting on the inside for how much I don't like it though. <laughs> um, it's like I hate this, but I'm gonna play it anyway. <laughs> exactly, uh, and that's where your uh, max would be as far as man. You really have to think about that. No. Um, I mean, the Drow Warlock is probably something that comes that's off fairly strong. often. Um, All right. I would probably go with maybe a surf. Well, no, because you can just go with a Fey Pact, and maybe that's not as. Or a Hexblade would be good with that. Hexblade, okay. A Ladrin uh, Warlock. Would be yeah, a, yeah. A good dichotomy. Right well, there. I'm thinking of the 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 fun combination, not necessarily mm. the min max combination there. And that's right. probably a little bit more. Well, I mean, we have the Barbarian. Mm -hmm. um, Wild elves were a thing in the past. Um, and again, yeah. oh, Averils mm -hmm. are the winged elves. Yeah, winged uh, elves, right? Putting either of those two as a, a barbarian sounds spot on to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Carol, I have a question for you. Are there yeah. too many subclasses of elves or sub races of elves? Yes. Are there what we got? I what, don't even know how many there are. I mean, I, I've frankly lost count. Or ladrins. I think uh, a, lot, a lot of it. A lot of it's because it's the pulling from different uh, worlds, aren't they? From different settings. Shadow. Shadow Kai. Shadow Kai. Shadow Kai. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't even mm -hmm. think I have them all. I have D and D Beyond, so I don't even think Water. I have them all. There's seven. Wood. In 5e, there's seven at the moment. I don't know. Now, I don't... This is within this is within Faerun, right? This is mm -hmm. within Forgotten Yeah, Realm. true. I guess that's I'm true. I'm not even talking about going off into yeah. into Sevens. different playing systems and stuff, but there are seven. Oh, seven are you calling the Eladrin just as one sub race, or are you calling them four? I'm, uh, I'm just saying the Eladrin. I don't know. I mean, because uh, you have summer, winter, up? spring, and fall. The courts, yeah. So you yeah, actually have sense. a sub race within a sub you race. Have a sub race within a sub race. I and, mean, then, yeah. and then there's a variant of an Eladrin now too. So yeah, it just so, gets. So Carol, are there? I think, well, I think there are too many. I mean, I mean, you're only going to play one. So I mean, is there really? 
I mean, unless you have a hard time or want a narrower, you know, band to choose, I don't see why it really matters how many there are. I think it's great for the play. On choices. The I like choices. Forgotten Realms lore, which is you had uh, Coralon, I think. Yeah, who is this or something like that, great yeah. shapeshifter of a god who oh, never Corellin. actually Corellin, Corellin. Yeah. however Corellin. you want to pronounce it, <laughs> mm -hmm. but a god who has no uh, uh, is an immutable form. He changes <laughs> often and plentiful, and so his children were very much similar to that until eventually, at some point, he pissed someone off, and uh, everyone was like, "Nope." No more changing. You are what you are. Deal with it. And just the idea that these elves could change into just all different forms to adapt to their environment. And so the elf sub races are plentiful because, you know, at the beginning of Forgotten Realms time, their god was exactly like that. And so, mm -hmm. and that might be a good way to um, go with, uh, sorry, flavorful. Um, a flavorful class is making them a, a cleric who maybe seeks to um, repair elves back to their grandeur when they weren't um, stuck in the forms they are now, but could change in a little bit. That would be a whole campaign. I feel like maybe mm -hmm. more than that, honestly, but so, so, I'm going to so, write it down now. So I'm going to put this out to uh, to a David, and I'm going to ask you each the same question. It'll be our last question of the night, and yeah. ask you each one. David, what is one interpretation of an elf that you've seen in popular literature? Because we've talked about, you know, Lord of the Rings. We've talked about Dragonlings. We've talked about how D and D has interpreted them throughout different sub races, different subclasses. How you min max everything else. Like, what's one interpretation you've seen of an elf in popular literature? that you would kind of like to find a way to port over in some type of homebrew D and D what's what's would be mm. one thing that you may have read <laughs> in a book somewhere that you say, you know, this author had a, this series or something like that. And it was an elf that did this. And I think it would be kind of cool. Uh, graphic novels. Um, one recently that was turned into a series on Netflix uh, called bright. Uh, oh, the, okay. the elves okay. in that yeah. were yeah, actually it it's classist. They, yeah. they classist. They were classist, and uh, they were also in charge of organized crime. You so. might actually <laughs> find that in an RPG because I think that was like based on Shadowrun. Right, but no, so. he's saying from current popular yeah, literature, you, and you Bright, Bright was one of them. Bright was yeah. amazing, by the way. But yeah, but I think you absolutely could look at the look at the game Shadowrun and see how to convert it to five E. Mm -hmm. That would be. I used, I used to play the video game Shadowrun like <laughs> on Sega same, Genesis or something. I'm uh, like pretty that. sure yeah. it's the same, oh, yeah. same yeah. thing. Yeah, very, very cool. Bright was terrific. I loved it. Yeah, I thought I, I that was a it. great... I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to see it. I didn't uh, even I didn't think about it. that. That's right. I that, don't know. that turned the whole, uh, you know, uh, elf errata on its ear. You know? Okay. It just, yeah. So Very, very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Carol, how about you? So what is one interpretation of an elf you've seen in popular literature that you would like to see ported over or play in some version of a homebrew uh, D &D campaign. I don't, I don't, I don't really have an answer for this one. I mean, I mean my favorite is it. So, but, uh, and you already can. So <laughs> I don't really, I know I almost would rather have this, this discussion about classes, you know, like it may be a different version of some of the classes out there I'd like to see, but, I don't really have a good one for, for, I don't have a really good, I don't know. I mean, said the ones I've read, basically that, that have had elves in it, the books I've read are um, basically, yeah, I saw Bright, but yeah, Lord of the Rings and, <laughs> and I watched Lord of the Rings and yeah. the Drizzit books. And the Drizzit books, yeah. yeah. Well, the, so much of stuff. Popular ones, yeah. Those are most certainly most popular but ones. But I can't really think of any weird, like versions of it that I, I can really think of that i'd want to bring in a game if okay. i could interject just one okay. thing um heavy metal comic book remember the the and they got their own uh comic spinoff by marvel was the comic elf 
and mm. they were wild elves from Faerun. So, yeah, so, see, I don't get not from, yeah, I from the Fey realm. And yeah, they were barbarians. Wow. Mm -hmm. That really that, that cool. would now now that actually would tick off some boxes for me. I mean, I, I barbarians are are fun. They're really fun class. They're and, fun characters to play. Yeah. And to think and to think about playing an elf as one, that would be that would be very interesting. I I That'd actually cool. could might have to do that at some point on a murder of a one shot. <laughs> Make an elf barbarian. Make an that elf could barbarian. Be, that would be cool. That would be fun. That'd be cool. Kyle, to you, what is some interpretation or some version of an elf you've seen in popular literature that exists outside the scope of, um, of 5e lore right now that you would like to see play mm -hmm. in some type of homebrew? Like the Witcher elves or mm -hmm. something like that, you know? Oh, they did forget about the Witcher. Mm -hmm. It's been so long since the Witcher's been on. And Good you're well. muted again. You always I forget. Knew that. It's yeah, fine. sure. It's sure you did. Do you want to hear all the belches? You can listen to all the belches. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. All right. No. Um, if it has to be outside of 5e lore, then again, I'm really still inspired by the uh, uh, just living forever and ever elves. And I want to see what that impact is a little bit more. Um, how that would affect a campaign uh more honestly um i'm pretty stuck on uh, uh forgotten realms lore however though and so i have to say among those my favorite are favorites um have to be those half elf characters um and i can't remember his name but he was in the richard lee byers series yeah, known as the rage which is in that world, you had the dragon or you had the giants, then the dragons took over, and then the elves were slaves of the dragons. Uh, and they figured that, uh, spoilers ahead, uh, <laughs> that the only way they could overpower uh, or at least free themselves from the dragons is they created the very first mythal, which housed the, uh, the rage which is uh, uh, a period of time in Faerun history where uh, dragons just lose all sense of self and just become animals that rip and tear and sunder and become so non-thinking that the elves could then outthink them. And even though they were being slaughtered, they would be able to defeat the dragons. Um, and so in that character, there is an Avril elf who grew up as a barbarian, but turned into a fencer. Uh, and so elf characters who kind of lose their heritage um, is something I, I find fascinating because it's like, man, you live so long, you know your great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> you can ask him any question. What are you confused about? Uh, and so seeing elves in that, um, in that place is something I really enjoy as far as role playing goes. Okay. No, no, that's good. That's good. It's I, I'll, I'll, I will chime in my last bit. There would be one interpretation of an elf. Um, I've been rereading uh, Jack Chalker's uh, series, the um, um, Dancing God series, which I encourage anyone if you have a chance. Uh, he wrote five books, uh, River of the Dancing Gods, Demons of the Dancing Gods, Vengeance of the Dancing Gods, Songs of the Dancing Gods, and Horrors of the Dancing Gods. Um, very, very good, very literal interpretation of rules, but his, their interpretation of elves and fairy were, were um, each one had a very, very specific function. And I always thought this is interesting. The, why, this is why I asked you, Kyle, the question about multi-classing. And I asked you, Carol, the, the uh, question about uh, drow. And David, I asked you the question about what was your, what were your favorite stereotypes is that in this setting, each type of fairy race had one job to do. And it goes back to the very first D and D expression of the elf, the basic, the elf being a class and a race. Mm -hmm. A dwarf was a class and a race. So if you were an elf, you had a job to do. And it was this, you were the combination warrior spellcaster period. So in this interpretation of an elf, you, or a fairy race, any type of fairy race, if you were one type of fairy race, you did this. If you're a different type of fairy race, you did this. 
If you were trolls, for instance, you had to live under a bridge. The rules dictated that this is what wow. you did. You couldn't, be, you couldn't be a troll barbarian. You had to be a troll bridge keeper, right? <laughs> and so wow. I mean, it, it, was, it was really interesting the way that they interpreted um, you know, all the different stereotypes and brought those together. So I mm -hmm. thought it would be interesting to play all of your fey races as classes as well. And to where if you were going to play an elf, you had to play in this way. I thought that would be interesting. And after about three episodes, very, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, that, with that being said, uh, we'll, have a, we'll have quick final thoughts. Um, we'll start with you in reverse order. This time we'll start with you, Kyle. Uh, what are your final thoughts on elves? You should have picked a dwarf to begin with. <laughs> hey. There you go. <laughs> Carol, what are your final thoughts on elves? Um, I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy playing them, although I do tend to not play them as aloof like a lot of people. And hence, that's why I have Taryn, which I really tried to break the mold on by having her be two types of elves and growing up in human city because, well, in, 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 in my war, uh, those two types of elves don't get along with each other. So the parents kind of had to leave because of the prejudice against because how their 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 relationship was totally disapproved and they got freaking sick of it and went to human city so because i was commented i don't play it aloof enough blah 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 i'm like fine i'll come up with a reason so there you go right 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 david what are your final thoughts on the elven race uh i i think they're wonderful i i love it and uh to clarify my statement about the pop culture reference when I refer to the novel as Elf, it's actually Elf Quest. Oh, so, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Wolf Riders. Yeah. I think right. I have <laughs> seen that actually. Mm -hmm. I've read them a long time ago. But uh, Elves, I mean, uh, I love them. When I was a kid, I mean, my friend Michael and I used to fight over who was going to be Legolas and who was going to be Elrond. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so that sums it up. I think every time I've played an elf, I've always played an elven magic user. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Always, an, it, with the exception, one time I played my first game with playing with murder hobos, I played an elf, an elven magic user, I guess, an elven mage. Oh. And Balin, named Balin Long and Thin. Yeah. And he, and he was, he was right. long and thin. I mean, <laughs> you played him on here, right? Wasn't he uh, in Thin as well? No, no, no. That was no, a, that was his sister. His sister was oh. Samora, the continent elf. Yeah. So I, can, I have to play. I have oh, to no. frequently had to stop. You know. <laughs> so I always have to put a little bit of silliness into uh, into them because you know elves are pointy haired, silly people. Yeah. Uh, but also a lot of fun to play. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, we'll uh, leave it there, and uh, we'll wave bye to everyone. Thank you for joining us, and again, please uh, follow us on Twitch, Twitter. Venture Sense, Pirate Dog Dice, Oddfish Games. Shine Project. Shine in, Shine How Project. to RPG with your cat. Next weekend, look at the little beholder, follow and retweet and stuff like that. And that little... Yeah, yeah. Your... Muses underscore touch on Twitter. And you follow and retweet. You have to retweet the post to follow me and put a silly comment underneath. And uh, I'm really happy with this guy he's one of my favorites well, that's all wave goodbye she's very he's happy too he's came up to cool. wave ah. that's cool